So welcome back everybody. For this video, we have this nice clean second gen here that needs the rear differential rebuilt. So it is a Ram 2500 with the 5.9 Cummins uh, automatic transmission and the Dana 70 in the rear that the closet track is not working anymore. So the limited slip clutches are rattling and I, I looked at it before and there's a bunch of chips and stuff out of it. So the parts finally came in and we're gonna get the rear end taken apart and I'll walk you through how to do it and yeah, put new clutch packs in. So follow along and I'll walk you through how to do it. All right, first thing we need to do is take the drive shaft off. Now these are usually four eight millimeter or five sixteenths bolts. Um, sometimes they're a little rounded and stripped. So yeah, you may need to use like an extractor or vice grips on it. But there's four of them. Um, so if you put the if you put the transmission in neutral, you can spin the drive shaft. It's easiest to get them out when they're at the bottom here. So you spin the drive shaft over, bring these two to the bottom, and then spin it again, and then the other two will come to the bottom and you can get them out. Once you have the U-joint out, um, it's best to wrap tape around the caps. So you have all four caps and you wrap tape around the whole thing, and then that'll keep your end caps that are exposed from falling off. I just want to give an overview of this rebuild kit. Uh, the part number is 2021-290. It's a actual Spicer rebuild kit. It is for a Dana 70 with 32 spline axles. So the reason you have to know the axle spline is because it, the axle splines into these gears. So you have your gears, you have your cross members for inside, you have your little spider gears, uh, you have your coned washers that come with it. You also have thin friction discs and thick friction discs. Now, you can tell the thick and thin ones because the word thin right there is actually stamped on the thin discs. And it comes with a jug of Spicer friction modifier. Now, you're gonna need more than just uh, this bottle. Um, you have to soak the, the friction discs for at least 20 minutes before you put them in the disc in the uh, in the differential. If you put them in the differential dry, you're just going to fry them. Um, so they need the friction modifier to soak into the discs. That's why in these limited slip diffs, you have to run a friction modifier because that prevents these discs from wearing out. So before I even start ripping the um, axle apart, I'm going to get these soaking and. I have two separate pans here, so I can separate the thick and the thin ones. And then I have another bottle coming that I'll put in the differential. So just to make sure you get it all in everything, you can take your fingers or like a paintbrush and um, smooth it out and make sure it gets in all of it. You can also pull it in the middle, so then as it absorbs, it'll leach out into the discs. So yeah, pretty good kit. Uh, comes with everything you need to rebuild the limited slip and the differential. Now let's start taking the diff apart and these can soak. Even if you don't get to them, they can soak in this stuff no matter how long it takes you to get to your diff. It's not going to hurt them. They're not going to deteriorate. This is what this, this is what they're made to do. They sit in your diff and oil and everything all the time. So the longer they soak, the better. So now that we have our friction disc soaking and the drive shaft off, we've got to take, start taking the rear differential apart. Um, I'm going to drop this sway bar so you can get easier access at the differential cover bolts and also getting the um, pumpkin in and out, it'll be easier with the sway bar out of the way. So you can just kind of rock it in, rock it out. Uh, it's nice on these because the bolts for the sway bar have a connector on them. So you don't even have to hold the heads or anything. You just zip the nuts off and they'll, uh, they'll, they'll, the sway bar will just come right out of the way. You can get the bolts out, no problem. So I got one side done already. I'll just do the other. There we 
go. This way our nuts are all off, it'll just swing out of the way like that. And then you can put the, take these right out of the way. Set them aside on your cart or your bench or wherever you're working. And it'll be all good. Now we gotta get a drain pan to put underneath the differential and catch the oil. Now these discs come from factory with some tags on them. So there's one long one and one small one here. Uh, this one, this short one, tells you that it is limited slip and it says use limited slip diff lubricant. So that's, that's what's nice about the Danas. They will have these tags on them and then this tag is the diff number and the gear ratio, or yeah, gear ratio. So this one, there's the diff number there and it has 354 gears in it. So hang on to those. If your diff has the tags, it's best to keep them, but if it doesn't have them, then it's not a big deal. If you need to find your gear ratio, you just pull the cover off and count the pinion gear teeth Count the crown gear teeth and then divide them and you can get it. So now that the bolts are all off, this one's siliconed on, so we're gonna have to get a little hammer and just give it a little tap. And once it cracks open, got my drain pan in place, should just drain out the bottom and we can catch it. the sound will change and that'll tell you that the silicone is starting to come loose so if it doesn't come right off and you hear the noise changing you just get a little screwdriver and put it in between here once you hear the sound change that means it's separating and then pry it out and we'll just drain it out So once the cover's off, you can set it aside to drain. Now the diff will just drip out. Uh, to get the pumpkin out, you have to take out these four bolts and then the pumpkin will fall out. But before you do that, you have to pull the axle shafts out because the axles come in from the sides and spline into those collars or spline into those spider gears that are in the rebuild kit. So to pull the axles out, I'll show you, uh, I'll show you how to do that. So after you get the wheels off, you can see this center hub here has these bolts around it. These bolts hold the axle in. So all you have to do is take these bolts out and then the axle slides out of the pumpkin in the middle of the diff. Uh, these are 9 16 on this truck, but I've seen them 14 millimeter, 15 millimeter, a um, bunch of different sizes. And there will be oil in here. So it's best to get another drain bucket and put underneath. Um, just so the hub itself can drain into a bucket instead of making a mess. So let's get these bolts out and pull the axles out. And it's the same thing on the other side um, to remove the axle. So you, once you get them both out, that pumpkin will spin nice and free. So there we go, once you feel it drop down, you know it's out of the pumpkin and you don't have to pull it out any further. As you can see, there is some oil dripping out of it, so it is good to put a bucket under it. Now you gotta do the same thing to the other side and then, yeah, it's, it's ready, to, uh, ready to take those four bolts out that hold the pumpkin in and it's ready to roll. So we have our axle shafts out and you can see Pumpkin spins freely. So now we can take these two bolts out and these two bolts and roll the diff out. Um, this thing is fairly heavy, so you're gonna have to have a good, um, good table or bench to put it on. 
Um, because yeah, if you just have like a plastic cable, it's probably going through. So yeah, we'll get these bolts out, roll the pumpkin out, get it on the bench, clean it off, and get, uh, get started on disassembly of that. I think maybe before I pull it out, I'm just gonna get some brake clean and spray it down real good to get as much oil off of it as I can. Now before you take them off, it's always a good idea to take a paint marker and mark your right and your left side. Because these caps, they may be interchangeable, but usually they're not. They're usually like machined on the one, on the one side and it is best to just keep them on the same side that they came from. So here I've wrote an L on this one and an R on this one. Now I got the end caps off, but the diff won't come out. Um, oil gets on the bearings and then it just kind of sticks it in there. So you have to break that seam of oil. To do that, I usually take a pry bar, put it right here on a nut or on this side on a tab and just kind of rock it. And then it should pop right out. So you may have to do that when you may have to do that when you're trying to get the pumpkin out if it won't come on its own. So now we got the carrier out and we can clean all this old oil in here. I don't know if you can see, but back above the pinion, it's all flaky and we can get all this old gasket off. Just get all the gunk out of it. Even the axle tubes, there's a whole bunch of black stuff in it. That's just old oil. So we can clean all that out now and um, yeah, we can get that done. Now there's different styles of shims. This diff didn't have shims I've seen other differentials had. Usually, from what I've seen, this is the outer race of the bearing that holds the carrier. The shims will go between the differential housing and the carrier. So it'll shim the pumpkin out like that. They'll be in between here. But this differential has the shims between the carrier bearing and the carrier itself. So in between here, there are a bunch of tiny spring, uh, tiny shims. So in order to change those, you have, like if you're doing gears, you have to re-shim and everything to get the proper lash. So to change these shims around, you have to press this bearing off, re-shim it, and then press it back on and then try it again. So I've done them before on a Dana 60 that was in the front of a, second gen coming, so it really doesn't surprise me that, um, that these are like that. To break down this unit, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts. These were 9 sixteenths. They're long, they go down into the second half. So you take all these bolts out, and then this half lifts off and exposes our, clu exposes our clutches. Now. Right off the bat, we can see the problem. All the friction material is gone. So the, this is supposed to have this friction material that we see on these new clutches, but it's all gone. So you basically just take this all apart layer by layer. And you can set it aside on the bench. So keep everything stacked how it should be. And then this disc right here, you can see there's teeth missing here. It's all bent. It should fit rather snugly on this gear, but there's a lot of play. So yeah, just take everything off, set it aside. This one's really bad and you can see it's grooved right down. Just keep taking it apart, layer by layer. <clears throat> and then you get down to here. But again, just keep taking it apart, layer by layer. And it's pretty, uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. But if you take everything apart in order that you, like lay it out in order you take it apart, you shouldn't really have any issues with putting anything back together. So we have our housings all cleaned off and now we can start reassembling. 
So they're on our plates. There's thin plates and there's thick plates, remember. We start out with one thin plate. Doesn't matter which way these go in, just as long as it's a thin plate. Um, for these tabs, there are slots in the housing that they just fall in like that. So that's down in there. Now we do a washer. These washers are cupped one way. They're not flat. So the way that is cupped goes up when you're assembling this side. So you do the cup washer, another thin plate, another washer, and then a thick plate. The thick plate goes in last. So the thick plate is the plate that is riding against our um, clutch ring right here. So to put this in, we already have some lubricant down in there. So you set this down in, like so, and then you have to line the splines up on the uh, clutches, on the, uh, the plates with this collar, and they'll all just slide in together, right like that. So we take our spider gears, which are these little side gears, and you take the uh, one piece of this cross member. Put these on like this, so they will mesh with this gear here. Now, if you can see, there are some rounded, wider slots. This end of the spiders, this, the cross member is rounded. That will go down in that slot like this. So then these gears will become meshed with this gear here. And then you take the other side and you can see there's notches, flat spots right here and here. Those will go into these shallower grooves and the gears will be splined in like that. So you have it looking, looking like this. This is how it's gonna look um, when you're halfway done. The rounded edges of the the round edges will be facing down on this one. So they'll go down in the smooth spot right here. And then the flat edges are facing down into these grooves here. So now we have the one half put together, we can put the other half together. So you want to start out again with a thin plate. Doesn't matter which way it goes, as long as the tabs line up and it just falls down in. Cupped washer. The cup of the washer faces up. Another flat plate. Your thin plate. Another cupped washer. And then the thick plate. And then this um, clutch ring. So that is what the this ring is what the clutch is actuated against when they grip. And then you, again, you set this um, piece of spider down inside. You may have to hold the clutch ring and spin, spin the gear a little bit to make sure it gets down inside of all, the, all of them. And it'll settle down in right like that. So for reassembling this, I marked these two tabs with a paint marker. So then I just basically lined the tabs on the other half up with my paint marker marks. So my marks are here and here. So I'll line them up with that tab and that tab. So right here and here. Now to put this lower half on, you take your fingers and put them in to hold the spider gear in place or else when you flip it upside down, it'll fall out. So we want to go ahead and put this back together. So I li you line up your paint marker marks, hold your fingers in the middle, and as you bring, down, bring it down, kind of twist it a little bit, and that'll line the splines up, or line the teeth up on the gears. So now we have our paint marker marks lined up. 
Now it's time to just put these bolts back in loosely so they'll hold the two halves together. So there. We got a little bit of preload on it, so that's going to keep everything down in place. Now we got it in the vise with a couple pieces of wood on either side, so that way the wood is coming in contact with the pinion or the uh, ring gear teeth instead of the metal jaws. So this gap in here will close up as you're torquing these down. Now you got to bring it down nice and even, so. You can do that by doing like two turns on each bolt in an alternating direction. So you, I do this one up here and then the opposite one on the other side of the carrier and then go to this one to this one. And that'll bring everything down in nice and uh, evenly. So just little by little, we'll bring it down in, close the gap up. If you notice that it is not closing the gap up or it's going down unevenly and the bolts get really hard to turn like they're bottoming out already before the gap is closed stop torquing it down stop tightening it because something's not lined up properly uh, it could be that one of the cupped washers with the splines that have to spline onto the spider gear isn't lined up and you'll just start crushing that washer instead of tightening it down level and flush how it should be. So we got to put our bearing caps back on the ends here and it's ready to go back in the truck. So now we got our differential all cleaned out, ready for the carrier and the gear to go back in. So to do that, it's nice if you have a case spreader, so then you can just bolt it onto here and it pushes the case apart and spreads it open so it'll just go in easier. And it's really nice if the differential's off the truck, so then you use the weight of the carrier to push itself in. But you can still do it without either of those. Um, some diffs have adjusters that thread back and forth. That, I usually see that on AAM axles. So in the newer Cummins and Duramax. So you just loosen those off and then the diff will pop right in. This one, it's not bad. Once you get it started, then you can just kind of pop it in with a pry bar. So let's get it in and get our bearing caps torqued up. And then, yeah, we just got to put the diff cover on, seal it, and it's ready to go. So, we, I got it in. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit, it's a little tricky. This one, I took my pry bar, put it into the differential like this, and put this end on my shoulder, and kind of stood up to bring the differential up in place, and then it just fell right back in. So, you don't need a case spreader. It makes life a little easier, but, you can do it with the pry bars as long as you hold it even, like hold it level with the race, hold it level where the races have to go in, and it should just fall right in. So now we take our end caps, our bearing caps that we marked, put them on the side they go on, and the torque spec on these, again, same as the uh, bolts to hold the two halves together is 80 foot pounds. So there we go, we got our diff cover all cleaned up, a bead of silicone laid around it. Now, when you're putting silicone on, when you're putting on the silicone, you don't really need a thick, thick bead but you wanna make sure that you go around each hole. So as you can see, you just lay a little bead between the holes, go around the hole and keep going like that. 
So you don't need a ton, but you need enough that it is going to going to stick. So I wire wheeled all my bolts. So I use, I like to start just putting one in at the top and one at the bottom. So that way everything else is lined up before I before I put the cover against the surface. So I know I'm not smearing my silicone. Everything's going to stay where I need it to be. So just hand thread them in until it starts to make contact and then stop and hand thread the rest of them in. You don't want to tighten it down all the way because that'll squish all the silicone out. You want to leave it so it's making contact. You want to leave it so it's making contact with both surfaces for probably like 10, 15 minutes. And what that does, it makes a film where it's starting to bulge out. So then when you torque it down all the way, the silicone just kind of bends and doesn't squish all out of, of your connection. So we'll put the rest of the bolts just hand tight in. Don't forget to put your tag back on here and your other tag over here if they're still on your diff. All right, it sat for a little while. Now we just want to snug them up. So once this has sit for a little bit and the silicone's all dried up, you take the drain plug out and you have to put another tube of friction modifier in it. Our clutch is soaked in friction modifier, but you still have to put a tube in it. So this is the stuff that I use. Um, it's available at my local Napa store, so I just use it. It is, it's called CRC PosiTrack. You use this whole tube for one diff. So I like to put this in first so then I know I'm getting the full tube in. So then once you've done that, you wanna make sure the hubs get filled up after we put the axles back in. Um, to do that, you just line the splines up, they slide in, you probably have to put a little bit of silicone on the mating surfaces, so then you don't have to worry about them leaking. Um, sometimes there's a gasket in there you can reuse, other times there's not. So after you fill this up, you wanna overfill it, put the plug in, and then jack one side of the axle up, or let the vehicle down on a piece of wood on one side so the axle will tip, fill up that hub, let it sit like that for like a minute. It'll fill up that hub, bring it back up to level, like bring the axle back up so it's level, then do the other thing to the opposite side, so you put the block of wood or whatever under this side, tip the axle that way, let it sit for a minute, check the level, if it is good, then just put the plug back in, throw the sway bar back on, hook up the drive shaft again, and put your wheels on and then you're good to go. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you on the next one.